Sorry for the wait, guys. I hope you didn't start this series a month ago thinking that you were going to get your gun up and running for that following weekend. Expecting to play. Because if you did, the only thing you played was yourself. All right, you guys. Some of you have been waiting very patiently for this next episode. And I do apologize for the delay because since the last episode, the YouTube unboxing mystery box has gone live and I am in charge of building them. Every single one of them. So Bat Vision 808 and RGK and C7 Viper and Call Sign Zombie and everyone else who bought the mystery box, I hope you're enjoying your gifts. You better be enjoying your gifts because I have your addresses. But anyways, guys, make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content. We are trying to beat the YouTube algorithm. Air, Air, Airsoft keeps getting zucked by YouTube. So share this with your friends, share it with your family. And if you want to support the channel directly, feed me, Boaz. Kevin don't need no food. Go support us by going to airsoftgi dot com and picking up all your airsoft needs you know pick up that new airsoft gun bb's whatever and you supporting them supports us directly so let's get into this video if you haven't watched the last episode of building your build where we take apart the gearbox and talk about angle of engagement and how to correct it shame on you go ahead and go watch that but today now that we have the gearbox apart we're going to show you how to disassemble it and we are going to be replacing all the compression parts with aftermarket parts to get the most consistent FPS out of your gun. Now, what does working on the compression actually do? On most stock guns, you will see a FPS variation of about 10 to 20 feet per second between shots. So let's say you shoot your gun and it's rated to shoot between 350 and 370 FPS. That means you shoot a shot, maybe it shoots 370, then you shoot another shot, it shoots 350, then you shoot another shot and it shoots 360, somewhere in between. The point of working on your compression and getting it as tight as possible is to make sure that there isn't any loss of FPS. And you might see an increase in FPS if your compression is perfect. So once you do it, you should see your FPS variations decrease to maybe about five to 10 FPS. So you would get 360 to 370 and in between, or if you're really good, exactly the same. And if you're able to do that, DM me because I would love to know your secrets. So we have the gearbox apart on the table and I'm going to show you how to disassemble everything so it's easier to work on individual parts as needed. So first thing we're going to do is remove the entire compression set. You will see the tappet plate spring right here. Uh, what you're going to need to do is hold down the spring so when you release it, it doesn't go shooting across the room. And then just use a flat screwdriver or something that you can get underneath there to release it. From there, the whole compression set will come right out. And this is what we are going to be talking about directly, but we're gonna work on this in a little bit. So from here, you're gonna want to remove the gear set. Uh, I normally start off with the bevel spring and then I hold down the anti-reversal latch because that is spring loaded as well. and you might lose a spring or it might shoot across the room or something. So just take those two apart and then you can move, remove the sector gear and the spur gear. Uh, and then you'll see all the shims floating around. Just remove those because we are going to be um, changing out the gear set in this gun. But if you are not changing out the gear set, keep them exactly in place because you don't want to change the alignment that it already has. Then lastly, we need to remove the trigger and the trigger assembly so the trigger is spring loaded as well so you're just going to want to be a little bit careful uh, remove it at an angle and then it should come right out there is the spring and then we'll just set that over to the side and then lastly the trigger trolley and assembly so there is a spring right here you're just want going to want to do the same thing hold your finger down on the spring so it doesn't shoot across the room remove it from its post and then you will need a small phillips head to remove the screw right here Once you unscrew that, you should be able to lift it up. And then be careful when removing the wiring. Some gearbox do have a little shelf right here to tuck the wiring uh, into so it doesn't interfere or contact the bevel gear when it's rotating, causing a short end stuff. So we're just going to set this aside. 
Then from here, just to clean it up, I like to remove all of the excess grease from the gearbox. Um, you could go in detail and completely strip the gearbox apart and use degreaser. However, I'm going to do that later off camera because it is very time consuming and not really necessary. So I'm just going to use this clean towel that I have to wipe off all the excess grease. You're gonna want to get the uh, the tap and plate uh, rail section, little slot right there, and then just wipe off all the excess grease off the gearbox walls, and then it should be good to go. Same thing on the other side, get into the tap and plate area, and then where the bearings are on here, and then you are now good to start working on your compression set. So from here, I'm just going to remove the tappet plate, set it aside because I do not need it right now. And I'm going to test the original compression set to see how well it is working. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is hold your thumb over the air nozzle and the uh, cylinder head right there. And then you're gonna just take your piston and then push it forward. Now keep in mind, if you have a port, the compression will start after the port. So from here, you're just gonna hold it down and then push. Oh, that was actually, pretty bad so it's actually giving quite a lot of movement you're not supposed to be able to shoot it through so there is an air loss here somewhere so to start targeting where the air loss is coming from I'm going to remove the air nozzle and then I'm just gonna put my head directly on the uh, cylinder head and then I'm going to press it down so I, oh actually okay so you're gonna want to be a little careful don't put too much pressure on the cylinder head because you can't push it inward but you wanna put enough so when it starts to release air that it's holding it in place. So actually the, hmm. yeah, there's still a lot of air loss here. So it could be that I am not pushing it properly. Ah. Yeah, there's still just a lot of uh, just air loss there. So there is leaking in a few different areas. So what I'm going to do is completely replace the stock set with aftermarket parts. I have the Action Army Teflon uh, coated cylinder, the CNC production uh, double O-ring cylinder head, a modified O-ring uh, air nozzle, and then I have some gear grease. Now, gear grease is very important because you do not want to use silicon oil to lubricate any of the compression set or your gear set. So uh, gear grease is gonna be a little bit thicker. Uh, the one I'm going to be using is a multi-purpose synthetic blend. Um, actually, I have the ingredients of this specific gear grease. Hold on, let me pull it up. I believe it is Teflon and something else, hold on. It is... Two hours later. But this one is Super Lube, uh, multi-purpose uh, lubricant. So this one is Teflon and another component. This is actually what majority of gear greases are made of. But if you're having trouble or are concerned about what gear grease you use, go to airsoftgi.com, find a gear grease from a reputable company like Action Army, Echo One, and other companies, and you'll be able to find specific gear grease that you can use in your gearbox. I actually need to make a correction. We're not gonna be using the, uh, the CNC cylinder head. Uh, we are actually going to be using a Lonex one, uh, still double O-ring, but this one has the Sorbo pad for the corrected AOE. Taylor showed you how to do it on the OEM uh, cylinder head, but because we are wanting to improve the compression, we need to swap it out. So, Lonex cylinder head with the Sorbo pad, it is. All right, so we have all of the compression sets set out here. This is the OEM set, this is the aftermarket set. So we're going to compare them really quick to show you the differences. This is the Apex original air nozzle versus the modified O-ring air nozzle. There is a little bit of external shape differences. This one has a little bit of a bevel or a little bit of a rim right there that doesn't really matter. But the main difference is going to be on the inside of the air nozzle where, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there is an O-ring on the inside of there to rub against the cylinder head to keep air from leaking out. That is one of the biggest places where air will leak out instead of going into the barrel and having the O-ring there is a world of a difference. Then we have the cylinders. I'm still going to be using a full 
uh, cylinder, no ports in there. Reason being is because I have the 410 millimeter inner barrel. Now, depending on where the port is will depend on the length of the barrel that you want to use. If you do a three-fourths ported cylinder, you're gonna wanna be around 363 millimeters, and then halfway is going to be, I'd say like 300 millimeters or less, and then so on and so forth. Do a little bit of research, you'll see the, um, the charts on different cylinders. But the main difference that is going to be the determining factor for these cylinders is the material. Uh, Apex uses a aluminum cylinder versus the Action Army one. This is a Teflon coated one. So the Teflon actually makes the bore smoother than just the bare aluminum that will cause less friction when you are actually firing the gun. So it will slightly increase the cycle rate, not by too much, but it can um, help when the piston head is rubbing against it. So that's the main factor there. And then we have the stock pistons, or the stock piston with the stock piston head versus the AOE corrected piston with the aluminum piston head. Now, the main difference is going to be the ports and uh, the size of the channel where the o-ring goes as you can see this one is actually a lot larger for more air to escape uh, if you didn't see the way that we installed this in our last video go check it out it's actually good information that you're going to want to know so those are the main things there this will give you a better seal on the inside of the cylinder head or cylinder and then finally the cylinder heads so as you can see, this one is made of plastic with one O-ring. This one is a aluminum with two O-rings and we have a rubber brace up here in the front. Now, personally, I have been told that this rubber brace doesn't really help. If you are trying to do high speed builds, I've heard you don't want this because it actually um, vibrates a little bit more because it is bouncing uh, against the gearbox and you don't want that to happen. So keep that in mind. And then this one does have the sorber pad added to here. And as this one, we just wanted to remove it to show you guys the way it is. The double O-rings will actually help with creating that better seal, which is what we are wanting to do in this build. So now we just need to put it together. Now, if you have a really good compression set, it's gonna be a tight fit. So you're gonna need to manhandle it, but you're gonna need to be gentle, but still man to handle it but gently, all right? So first thing we're going to do is install the cylinder head onto the cylinder, and this one doesn't have any specific cuts. It can go in either way for uh, the gearbox. So we're just gonna pick an end and install that. But first, we are going to need to loop up the cylinder head. So uh, I'm gonna use the gear grease. I have a little paintbrush here that I'm just going to use to gently lubricate the o-rings here now what this is going to do is help fill in the air gaps and help slide in the cylinder head much easier into the cylinder because if you've ever done this before or as you're doing it uh, along this video you're going to realize how much of a pain in the ass it can be so just make sure every side is lubed up i'm also going to want to lube up the edges of the sorbo pad so it helps slide it in as well and then from here, we're just going to pop this sucker in. So slide that in. And this is where it's gonna get a little rough. So you're not gonna, you don't want to pinch the O-ring on the edge of the cylinder. So as I'm pushing it in, I'm keeping it at an angle and then see right here, it's kind of binding up a little bit. So I'm gonna use my nail to kind of just push that in and then slide that in gently. And then you're gonna to want to do the same for the second O-ring. This is where it gets a little rough because you're not gonna have as much leeway to move in the edges. So, um, there we go, perfect. Now I pushed it in a little too far, but that's okay because all we need to do is use the piston to push it out. And the way you want to align this is have the edge of the inside of the cylinder head line up with the edge of the cylinder. Now you're gonna be able to correct this exactly once you install it into the gearbox because there's a post that holds the cylinder head and there is a designated cut for 
the cylinder. So you're not gonna have to worry about it too much. You just wanna get it roughly in the exact area. So from here, you're going to want to install the air nozzle. It's actually very simple. Just pop it on, but you need a lubricator first. Same thing, helps fill the air seal and allows it to uh, smoothly rub against the shaft of the cylinder head. So just gonna take a little bit of gear grease, not a lot, just make sure you get all the edges there. And perfect. So then from here, all you need to do is pop it on. And then from there, you are good to go. See, just like that. Oh. Ooh, I could feel the rubber O-ring hugging against the shaft. Uh, this sounds so dirty. <laughs> but it is going to create a really good seal. And then the last thing you need to lubricate is going to be the cylinder, or the piston head for the time being. So what I like to do is get a good amount of grease. I'll leave that there. Get a good amount of grease. And this is gonna be arguable depending on who you're talking to. If you're talking to me, I'm going to say you want to lubricate uh, or add lubricant to the ports of the piston head. So it goes onto the inside, touching the inside of the O-ring. And then you're gonna want to add a pretty good amount to the outside. So what I like to do is kind of just scrape the brush against the piston head. So there's more lubricant that will go on the inside there. And then, like I said before, this will help fill all of the uh, holes where air can leak out and make it smooth for you to run. And yes, this is a lot of grease, but I haven't seen any problems with using this amount of grease in the amount of guns that I have built. So take that for what it is. And now we are ready to test the compression. So you're gonna do the same thing. You're just gonna slide that uh, piston head into the bottom of the cylinder and then you're gonna put your thumb over the air nozzle and then you're gonna push and as you can see it is tight like it's actually pushing back on the piston so i'm pushing really hard if you can see the coloration in my fingers and the indentation on my thumb there is no air leaking out of this compression set which means we are good to go the last thing we're going to talk about is the tappet plate now, surprisingly, the tappet plate on the Apex is actually still really good. So it is quite stiff, but there still is flexibility to it, which is what you want. So if you are running a high rate of fire build, if you have too stiff of a tappet plate, this could end up cracking off due to the high stress and you won't be able to move the air nozzle, which won't feed the BBs and your gun won't work. So if you want to replace this, to a stock one, like from any stock gun, uh, brands that I would recommend are Modified, Prometheus, Lonex, um, the Lancer Gen 2s are actually really good, um, G&Gs are decent, just name brand, okay? Just go for a quality brand and you will be all right. So all you need to do is realign it to the air nozzle. There is the edge that you could just slide that puppy onto. And then we are going to fit this into the gearbox. So we only need the lower part of the gearbox here. And what we're going to do is just slide it in. So as you can see, there's the post right here that will line up with the post on the cylinder head. And then we're just gonna line that up first. And then from here, as you can see, the cylinder is actually not in place. So what we're gonna wanna do is just push it in a little bit and then test it out. This is actually easier if you don't have the tap plate on it. So we'll do that. Right there. I'm going to remove the piston too because I'm making my life hard, guys. All right, so let's see here. Put that in the post. Check the alignment. And it looks like we are good. So it should sit in place just like this. Now, the last thing that we're going to want to do is check the air nozzle alignment with alignment alignment with the hop-up unit. So you're gonna need a flashlight to do this, but basically you're gonna wanna press the hop-up unit against the front of the gearbox to see how far the air nozzle presses uh, or goes into the hop-up unit. So for this, we will actually need the tablet plate. So from here, just gonna slide all that back in. Pop that in right there. I have a small little flashlight that I'm going to be testing with. Clip this 
onto my hat so I can actually talk while I'm doing this. Normally I'll just stuff this in my mouth. But from here, push it forward. See how it's sitting. Okay, so I'm gonna try and show you guys on camera with the flashlight. So the main thing that you wanna do is make sure that the air nozzle is seating all the way forward into the hop-up unit, but when it's pulled back, the air nozzle isn't still reaching into the hop-up unit. This can cause feeding issues it, because if the lip of the air nozzle is slightly exposed in the BB shaft, you won't be able to load the BBs into the actual chamber of the airsoft gun. So you just wanna make sure that while it's pressed against the front of the gearbox, uh, it is properly spaced and there are different sizes for air nozzles. Typically, version two air nozzles are about the same, but they could be a millimeter too short or too long and that can cause a dramatic difference. Um, a company that actually uh, has different sizes of air nozzles that I really like is going to be Max. Uh, I think it's Max Airsoft, M-A-X-X. -X. They have different length air nozzles for different um, uh, builds. So depending on your build, you're gonna to wanna to test it out. Uh, the best way that you can confirm that you have the correct size is taking apart your gearbox and then comparing it to the original air nozzle. So I'm just going to reach over here, grab the air nozzle, just line it up. Now, you won't be able to tell the millimeter difference from your eye, but you will be able to see if it's slightly too long or too short. And from there, you will be able to find the correct one. But it's safe to say that Prometheus, Modify, Lonex, as long as you get an M4 air nozzle or the air nozzle for your specific gun, it should be the correct one. All right, guys, once you have done those steps, you're done. Congratulations. Pat yourself on the back. You just leveled up your airsoft gun by five horsepower. Now, I have this compression set designed around the stock spring guide or spring. And this was giving about 380 to 390 feet per second with a 363 millimeter inner barrel. My goal is to be about 400 FPS. And if you want to change out the spring, now is the time to do so. But luckily, I have a quick change spring system. So I'm going to use this spring, uh, reassemble the gun when it is completed and chrono it. And if I didn't get the FPS that I wanted, I will be able to remove the quick chain spring guide like some of you lucky viewers out there and just swap the spring out very easily until I find the spring that will give me the FPS that I wanted. For those of you unfortunate to not have a quick chain spring guide, you are going to need to install the spring with the spring guide typically goes like this. And then you're gonna need to push that in and then hold that down. And then you're gonna need to do this with the, with the gearbox. And it's a pain in the butt. Find another video that'll show you how to do that because I'm not gonna show you how to do that, okay? All right, you guys, thank you for watching this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode because we will finally get into the gear set and shimming. And I'm also going to talk about changing out your pistol grip and motor alignment. Uh, and potentially the MOSFET install. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe for more content because we're trying to beat the algorithm and hit the notification bell so you get notified of when we upload videos. We upload every Wednesdays and Fridays and we live stream on Thursdays. Support the channel by going to airsoftgi.com and picking up all your airsoft needs, guys. You support them, you feed me, keep me nice and thick, and we're all happy. See you guys in the next one, later. Wasting water.